and welcome back to the garage. I'm the Junk Man, and today we're going to diagnose some common ignition problems. Before we get started, one thing I have to address. Before you can do any of these tests that I'm going to show you in this video, you need to have the service manual. Whether it's the factory printed manual or an aftermarket climber's version, you're going to need the manual to have all the specifications and accurate test procedures. Even though the general outline that I'm going to show you here works across many different models, new bikes and old bikes, because an ignition system generally all works the same, they're all designed a little bit differently, and I'll explain more about that as I go. So the specs used in this video for this particular demonstration will not probably apply to your particular bike. First off, I want to take a look at probably some of the most misunderstood parts of a motorcycle ignition system. First off, the flywheel, which has magnets in, in here, which uh, is also called the rotor in some manuals. Also, the magneto. And whether or not it is a breaker point ignition, like this one that I have for demonstration purposes, or a CDI ignition system, the function and tests are test procedures are going to be the same. When starting off, the main tool you're going to need is a uh, volt ohm meter or a multimeter. Now you can have a digital type like this or a uh, analog needle type. Uh, most people will find this most easily found and you don't need an expensive one to do this test. More expensive, obviously, the more accurate uh, and more sensitive they can be, but even the uh, inexpensive $5 ones that you can get at the auto parts store will work for this test. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Well, we brought it in a lot closer here so you can more easily see what I am doing and how I'm going to test. First off, let's look at the flywheel or rotor. Now, this, the function of the flywheel or rotor is twofold. For one thing, it's mounted to the crankshaft and it adds weight to the crankshaft and keeps the engine spinning uh, as the piston goes through its various strokes. Vert, whether it's a two-stroke or four-stroke, it keeps the momentum. But also its other function is inside, and each bike will look a little bit different, but there will be a series of magnets all the way around the perimeter, and they fit closely around, when this is all mounted to the bike, a round, and as you see, they want to stick together because it's magnetized, they fit closely around these coils that are mounted to this stator plate. Now, of course, I told you on this bike, this is a breaker point ignition, so you have a couple other, two other parts here that you will not find in a CDI ignition system. However, these two parts are just found in the electronics of the CDI box. So don't worry about this for this particular test that I'm demonstrating here. And as you see, this has three coils. Some will have a bunch of coils around. Some will have just two. Um, and that's why you gotta have the service manual because it'll explain. In this particular bike, uh, uh, this particular coil is the uh, coil that generates the electricity that will then go through the breaker points and uh, be sent to the ignition coil uh, that then fires the spark plug. And these other two are lighting and charging coils, which will which are tested the same way, but uh, I won't go into great detail about uh, why these are important uh, because these will be not be found on off-road only motorcycles because if you don't have lights or you don't have a battery to charge, uh, these coils are not needed. Uh, however, uh, this kind of this coil is needed because this generates a small amount of electricity that then is sent up to the ignition coil that's attached to the spark plug to then be stepped up to a higher voltage to then fire the plug. A common misconception when uh, diagnosing an, uh, an ignition problem is I know people, they, they try to hook a meter up to one of these wires in here, and if you don't have the manual, you don't know which wire is what, but a lot of people, they try poking around in here while they're kicking it, and they using their multimeter, they're trying to see a reading on there, and, um, and you will occasionally see a reading on here, However, it'll be usually for an instant, and you have to be watching. Uh, and then always in a forum, you'll see, oh, what, what's the output voltage that I'm looking for? Well, 
in most manuals there is no output voltage uh, specified because it's going to vary by temperature, engine speed, and everything. And when you're just kicking it over, you're not even kicking it 100 revolutions per minute. So you may, you may not even get a reading on here. Um, and that's not how you test. Your service manual will tell you this. The way you test any one of these coils, regardless if it's the charging or the uh, main ignition coil or magneto coil that generates the voltage for the ignition, is by resistance. And if you remember in high school uh, physics class, you may have built an electromagnet by wrapping coils of wire around a nail and then uh, touching a little like a 9 volt battery to it and you could uh, make a uh, rudimentary uh, 9 volt battery. You also, it also works the other way is that you wrap wire around your nail and then um, if you uh, run a uh, rare earth magnet or any permanent magnet across the coil, you'll be able to induce a voltage if you would have a meter on there that would register it. That's essentially what is happening here. And the number of turns of, around this core determines the type of voltage, uh, the amount of output voltage you're going to get. And that is why the manual always states to determine the, uh, the condition of these coils is to use uh, resistance values. And I'm going to show you that now. Well, as you can see, I have everything set up to do this test, to test this magneto coil. First thing I want to notice, uh, note to you guys, uh, for you guys with breaker point type bikes, you need, the points need to be open. They do not, you do not want them closed for an accurate test on this. So in this case, um, I just have a piece of cardboard stuck in here to keep the points opening. Uh, if when this is on the bike, all you need to do is remove the ignition cover and in the uh, flywheel there will be holes so you can look and rotate it so the points are open before you do this test. Now, in the service manual it tells you how to hook this up. Uh, your black lead is going to go to a ground. In this case it's the stator plate, but uh, if you're testing it on the bike installed, just touch it to any uh, bare screw on the frame and that will be sufficient. Your red probe needs to go to the appropriate colored wire that connects to this coil and that will be told in your service manual. In this case it's black. More often than not it will be black but you need to check your service manual for that because it could be a different color. Now as I have it set up here it's giving me a reading of 1.6. What does that mean? Well nothing if you don't have a service manual because the service manual gives you the range that this reading should be. In the case of this particular bike or this particular coil that it came out of, uh, the range should be 1.2 to 1.3. We have a 1.6. So this coil will not induce the cre correct uh, cur amount of current to then fire the spark plug. Actually, you probably won't even get any spark out of this. Now, what does it mean when it's higher? It means that you are getting close to having an open connection, which would be infinity uh, ohms of resistance, would be an, an open connection. The wire is broken. Well, the wires are broken in here. However, th there's a connection somewhere in this coil of wire or to it, it that is not um, good enough to, uh, to pass the current as effectively. This, the amount of windings is, uh, Determine, determines the amount of ohms of resistance. In this case, the factory designed it to be 1.2 to 1.3, and we're having a problem where we're getting a 1.6, almost 1.7 here. And temperature affects this too, and I'm going to show you that later on in the video. Now, what if we had lower than 1.2? That would tell me that we have a short, or the insulation in these wire, in the wires uh, from that is insulating these copper wires from this iron core are, has degraded and it's almost allowing them to touch. A resistance value of zero would tell you that you have a short in that the, the coil of wire and the iron core are touching. And as you know, electricity likes the path of least resistance. The last thing I wanted to show you here while we got a close up shot is I am going to show you how you can affect the resistance just by applying uh, a different temperature. In this case, heat. 
I have just a common old hair dryer and I'm going to show you. You watch the meter while I heat up the coil and you'll watch the resistance change. You see that? Just from heating it up for just a couple of minutes and I don't have a temperature gauge on this but uh, and a hair dryer doesn't get that hot uh, we were able to change uh, the ohms of resistance at least two tenths of an ohm so as you think about it as a uh, engine heats up that the resistance of these wires and these coils are going to change so if you're close to the edge of being good or bad when it heats up you may lose spark and that can also tell you um, that your coils are going bad. They're not completely bad, but they may be going bad. Now, just for fun, since we've heated it up, let's see if we can uh, uh, change it and make it go down by cooling the coils off. Just got a regular old ice pack here. Okay, after I sped this up by putting it in the freezer for a while and we hooked it up, now uh, we have a different reading. Uh, it's a lot lower just because we got it colder. So, this will. This uh, just shows you that uh, temperature affects this reading and that uh, this is generally where you should start when you have a no spark situation after all you've tested all the other more common things, the spark plug, the kill switch, uh, more than likely it results back to this. Well I hope you learned something today about uh, testing your magneto coils and a little bit of the theory of operation of how your ignition system and your motorcycle works. Regardless if it's, a, if it's a single cylinder or multi cylinder, it all has some basis uh, around magnets spinning around coils of wire. So, till next time, I'm the Junk Man. Like my Facebook page, subscribe to this channel, and thanks for watching. Uh, even though this test procedure is generally the same for all different kinds of bikes, it's. Uh, Start over. Oh, it what?